Let's look into finding the p-value in one way ANOVA. In this video, I'm going to find the p-value using an F table and using R. Suppose we wish to test the null hypothesis that three population means are all equal, and we feel that a choice of alpha of 0.05 is reasonable in our example. We go through and we get this ANOVA table. Computers usually give us a p-value as part of the output, but let's suppose for the sake of argument we didn't have one here and we only had our F statistic. Now that F statistic is a ratio of mean squares, the ratio of mean square treatment to mean square error. And here that is simply 8 over 2, and that's where this 4 came from. If the null hypothesis is true, the F statistic has an F distribution. We need the appropriate degrees of freedom. Now since our mean square treatment was in the numerator, then 2 is going to be our numerator degrees of freedom, and mean square error was in the denominator, so 9 is going to be our denominator degrees of freedom. So what I've drawn out here is an F distribution. So I'm going to say an F distribution with 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 9 degrees of freedom in the denominator. Our F statistic was 4. Somewhere over here. In one-way analysis of variance, the greater the value of the observed test statistic, the more evidence there is against the null hypothesis. And so the p-value here is simply going to be the probability of getting this value that we got in our sample, or something even greater, which is simply the area under the curve here. So the probability of getting this value, or something farther out in the right tail, if the null hypothesis is actually true. In our f-table, we can find f-values that give us a certain area off to the right. Now recall that we had 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator, and 9 degrees of freedom in the denominator. And that's distinctly different from 9 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. So since this top row is giving numerator degrees of freedom, I can't go to 9 here. Don't do that. We need 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator, which is here, and then we need to find 9 in the denominator. So we'd have to scroll down until we found this section. I'm going to blow that up a bit so it's easier to work with. Here we have 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 9 in the denominator. And recall what we're looking to find is the area out to the right of 4. That's going to be our p-value. In the table we can see that 4 lies between these two values. Now this is important for us. So if we were to draw this out, we'd see that the area to the right of 3.01 is this A value over here, 0 0.10. So the area out here is 0 0.10. And the area to the right of 4.26 is this value, 0 0.05. 0 0.05. And since 4 lies between 3.01 and 4.26, this area must lie between these two numbers. And so using a table, we found that the p-value, which is simply the area to the right of 4 under this curve, is less than 0 0.10, but greater than 0 0.05. Now if we wanted to get a little bit more precise than that, we'd have to use some software. So let's go to R and find that value. Here in R, the command pf gives the area to the left of the value you put in. So if we put in our value of 4, the degrees of freedom of 2 in the numerator and 9 in the denominator, we would get the area to the left of that value under an F distribution with 2 and 9 degrees of freedom. But we don't want the area to the left, we want the area to the right. So we could simply go 1 minus that value. 1 minus that value gives us the area to the right. And we'd see that our p-value is approximately 0 0.057. So using computer software, we can find that our p-value to three decimal places is equal to 0 0.057. Now of course this falls in the range of values we found from the table, but it gives us a little bit more precision here. In any event, the p-value is greater than the given significance level of 0 0.05, and so we do not have significant evidence against the null hypothesis at alpha equals 0 0.05.